What's up guys, Bloodshed here, bringing you the Barbarian Whirlwind Speed Comp for Diablo 3 Patch 267 and Season 19. Now we do have a solo push build in the description, which is completely different than this in a way because you don't have a Z-Monk keeping you alive. So the push build and the group builds are different. The speed build should be different. Check the description for all the different builds and things. I'm even gonna include a Z-Monk uh, like written guide for you guys from the Z Monk I was running with all day. He's been top 10 monk consistently, so check it for what we were running. And my build and his Z Monk build will continuously get updated. We're gonna run this next season for like XP farming instead of rat runs or instead of like uh, wizard speeds or anything like that. So we'll keep tweaking it the more we play it. We spent all day playing it on the PTR, but you know, things change and different methods come up and different Paragon levels might add different types of setups to the comp. You know, at an early game, we might run this and then at 2000 Paragon, we might run something else. You can kind of strip away more survivability and increase your speed or utility. I'm also gonna cut to live stream footage this time since I can't do a four player and commentate, I guess. I don't have everybody here right now. So you'll see me cutting back and forth between live stream footage. I've been having so much fun with this comp today running three barbarians and one support monk. It's pretty smooth and you're just like three freaking buzzsaws just cutting, carving your way throughout the rift. It's super chill to play, easy to play, fun. I know for me personally, I can easily read chat and play Diablo or you can watch another thing on your TV. You know, Whirlwind's chill overall. So that's the number one overarching thing is it's easy to play, chill, and you get some Paragon that isn't using, you know, like a necromancer for rat runs or wizard for like veers or bazooka now all these comps are still really good uh, rat runs should still be the fastest xp meta but i would say this is comparable to like the veers speeds that we were running a few seasons ago it's so like a veers comp or something like that um, bazooka will definitely push higher like the bazooka runs but yeah i can see myself running some super chill 119s early season like after the first week or so we'll be running 119s and like three to five minutes depending on how much augments we have or what drops we got. This is a really cool cruising type of build. I know other people in the community were testing it. So I'm gonna put a link to their um, information down below. I know Lexi and Rax were testing it. So if you want another alternate way, um, definitely check out their videos. I'm gonna try to remember to put them in the description. One thing I wanted to do with this testing was to not play during this season because the seasonal buff is actually crazy. If you're watching this in the future, during the PTR, the kill streak buffs, the buffs and bonuses, the angels, the freaking everything was just hitting way too hard and it was really hard to test it reliably. So we're playing on the PTR, but we're playing non-season PTR. So we have no kill streaks. So any time that I get will probably be improved by X amount of time, depending on how much they nerf the kill streak bonuses, right? So no kill streaks. I tested various paragons from 800 paragon. We were running GR 100 with no augments. Our main stat was really low, like 8,000 main stat at the most. Again, 800 paragon, no augments. We were running three to five minute runs with no kill streaks. If you bump it up to a thousand paragon, no augments, we are getting 105s in about three to five minutes. It really depends on the map layout and everything like that. You could pretty much guarantee we'd get like a four to five minute run, just chilling, just spinning to win, baby, right? Spin to win. As we pushed it up, we increased our paragon just to compensate because you wouldn't really do like a 114 without you know, a thousand Paragon or something like that. So we bumped it up to 1200 Paragon. We ran 114s really comfortably, like almost no deaths. The Monk was plenty to keep us alive and running up to, we actually pushed it all the way to 119 with 1500 Paragon, no augments. And that went pretty smooth. We tried a lot of different variations of the build, but the one I'm gonna show you is my favorite version of the build. And um, there's probably a lot of ways to play it. Again, it's the PTR, things can change, but I'm just gonna go through the build that I enjoyed the most. Ooh, a lot of build up to this video, but there's a lot of information to get across, right? You could probably run it with two barbs and an impaled demon hunter or a third DPS, whatever you want. You can even run two barbs, a Z monk and a Z barb, whatever you want. I personally am gonna probably run three DPS barbs and one Z monk. From what we understand, Rend is scaling off your main hand damage 
So actually holding a two-hander, you're getting some crazy scaling with rend. So you wanna make sure you have damage percent and cooldown on your weapon. I don't have cooldown, so there was times where I would drop Zerker for a little bit. We were also using low level gems like around 100 for all the testing. Because we have a Z Monk keeping us alive, we can go full red gems. You can see I don't have a lot of, I got a primal belt, but I got that 200%. I would probably just end up using a non ancient with 200, but a lot of my gear is non ancient. It's just like what we have. You gotta have Ambos in the cube. Ambo makes all your rend damage, condenses it to one second, so you're just constantly doing insane damage with rend. Mantilla channeling gives us tankiness and damage. Bandamite keeps us alive. It feels so nice with the two hander. You can really see and feel the damage and you're not skipping elites and since we don't have a z barb chaining elites to our new pack we're pretty much killing everything we come across unless it's like a shield pack that is with no density unless it's like really out of the way then we we you know we'll skip it but typically you're just going to kill everything um three barbs all with furnaces that's a lot of elite damage a lot of ran damage going through and it's really chill to play. Mortex Brace gives us all the Wrath of the Berserker rune effects, so we get damage, life per fury, all kinds of good stuff right there. You might be like, yo, why are you using Squirts, man? Well, yeah, Squirts is really powerful, especially with the Z Monk causing extra shields for us, so check the Z Monk build in the description. Um, we're actually keeping Squirts up surprisingly a long time. You could use a Molten, but I like Stricken. Even though I have Furnace, I like carrying Stricken just for that extra elite damage to make it a little bit easier and smoother and all that stuff. One person can carry Stricken, the other two barbs can carry Powerful, or however you wanna, you know, shake it out. Here's the current build that I'm running with. Um, this actually procs Focus and Restraint too, so if you need to do that. But I'm using Furious Charge just to get around the Rift easier, since I don't have Illusionary Boots or anything, I can just kinda pour it around wherever I need to. It is proccing Band of Might. Um, ground Stomp's good too, but we have the Monk pulling enemies, remember, so we don't have to pull the mobs together, and sometimes that might conflict with your Z Monk. Wind Shear is the reason why we have Resource. It can get a little dicey on Rift Guardians, because, um, yeah, Resource is kind of bad. But we haven't had one time where we couldn't kill the Rift Guardian. It just slowly dwindles as the Rift Guardian dies. You can use um, Warcry to get some resource back, and you can charge, and you get 15 Fury. So with Warcry and Furious Charge, it wasn't terrible. It's just, it wasn't like infinite, you know? Vulnerable Kathos is 100% necessary to keep up our buffs here. Basically, your stat priorities are double crit cooldown everywhere you can put it. You can see my gear. Area damage is nice. Remember, you have to manually cast um, Ren to get affected by area damage. So I'll throw out some manual Rens when there's a lot of density, when there's like 20, 30, 40. Like, I don't want to spend too much time casting Ren because I want to be always DPSing. But if I see a juicy pack, I'll stop and rend it really quick. If that turns out to not be a viable strategy to manually cast Ren because it's a DPS loss, again, the build description, anything important I'll put in there always. So like CDR breakpoints or anything specific, I'll just check the description for that. Just a quick recap, if you're new to the season and you're shocked at what's happening, they buffed Rend an incredible amount. Rend is affected by our six piece set now. And we got this thing called Ambos Pride that applies whirlwind when you're whirlwind re applies rend when you're whirlwinding. So it takes the two piece, which is 15 seconds of rend, and condenses it down to one second. It's crazy powerful, and you're doing your damage with rend for like cutting or wounding the mobs. That's how you're doing your damage, not with actual whirlwind skill. This is almost like a utility skill just to keep up our resource and to apply rend in the first place. They also buffed the Lamentation Belt. Ren stacks two times and does 200% increased damage. I guess I just wanted to recap that because it might be a big shock if you played a bunch of seasons, you know, basically the Wrath of the Wayside came out in season three and Whirlwind's been terrible all the way up until now, season 19, now it's really strong. A lot of people are like, yo blood, why is it on your bar if you cast it automatically? Well, like I said, sometimes I manually cast it for the area damage, but even if you never manually cast it just by spinning around and attacking, it'll pull the one that's on your bar and it'll use that one. If I didn't have it on my bar, it would just give me a no rune version of it. And I really like Bloodbath, right? It gives us some nice AOE damage, basically. It's kind of like how EP works, the Yuliana set. Two piece, 
applies exploding palm, but if you manually apply it, it's affected by area damage. Or if it's on your bar, it'll use the rune that's on your bar and give you like the cold rune or whatever. So it's the same concept, same type of skill, same game. There's not really like a cooldown breakpoint. I think anything over 40 is good. I really want 50. Like I said, um, I didn't have it on my weapon, so that's huge loss there. But like I'd say 50% is your what you want to shoot for in the build. Maybe area damage, I'd probably want to shoot for like 90 to 110 territory but this isn't mandatory you can do really well we're doing 119s without it make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash bloodshed i stream there six days a week i make content here on youtube i have a podcast i have a second channel we're just almost finished playing through pokemon where we're mostly through it pokemon stadium i'm gonna be playing other games um it's just like a i throw it's like a junk drawer of my creativity dead by daylight and all kinds of fun things shout out to the new patrons this week we got elsa elsa thank you so much for supporting um the stream and um the everything i appreciate that thank you this is the boba boba bloodshed and i'm out of here peace